Welcome. Thanks for joining us for a brief introduction to ZOS Hybrid Batch Processing. I'm Steve Getz with Dovetail Technologies. What I want to do in this session is give you a formal definition of what we mean by ZOS Hybrid Batch Processing, uh, give you a quick introduction to the COSY Coprocessing Toolkit, which is used to implement Hybrid Batch, take you through a Hello World example, and then give you some next steps to follow up on if you'd like some more information. So what do we mean when we refer to ZOS hybrid batch processing? Well, it turns out that we can capture the definition with the following five discrete steps. First, we want the ability to execute a program or a script on a virtual server from a ZOS batch job step. Furthermore, we want the batch job step to run synchronously with that program on the remote server so that when the program itself completes on the remote server, the job step completes as well, and we might continue with the next job step in the batch stream. Secondly, the target program that we want to run on the remote server may already exist and should require little or no modification for its execution. Third, the target program's input and output should be redirected from and to ZOS spool files or data sets. The idea here is that we want to be able to capture the data on ZOS, not have to go hunting for it on the remote server uh, once, uh, once it starts running. Fourth, the target program, when it starts to execute and during its execution, should be able to easily access other ZOS resources, uh, namely job step DDs, data sets, POSIX files, and potentially the output from other ZOS Unix programs. And finally, when the target program completes, its exit code should be adopted as the ZOS job step condition code. Now, IBM doesn't provide native software for implementing ZOS hybrid batch processing, but the COSY Coprocessing Toolkit does. Let's take a moment to look at that. The COSY Toolkit can be downloaded from our website and used for free under our community license. It's installed on ZOS, and each remote system that you wish to have as part of your hybrid batch processing regime has a target system toolkit installed as well. On ZOS, the COSY launcher is run from your job step, and it has the job of running the program that you wish to run on a target server, and it handles all the redirection of the standard streams uh, back to job step DDs. Once the program starts to execute on the remote system, it can use COSY dataset pipes commands to access ZOS resources. From DSN and to DSN are used to read and write ZOS DDs and datasets. From file and to file are used to read and write ZOS Unix files. And the COSY client command allows the remote program to run a ZOS Unix command and process the output. From a data security perspective, COSY is built on top of OpenSSH, which is a proven technology for peer-to-peer -peer communication and uh, a highly regarded security model. With respect to access to ZOS uh, artifacts and resources, the remote system is only able to access whatever ZOS resources are available to the job owner that runs the launching job step. So therefore, the job owner's SAF profile controls exactly what the remote process can, uh, can read and write. And then finally, in environments such as the uh, Z Enterprise with ZBX or a Z system with IFLs, where uh, you have a secure network connecting your ZOS and your Linux systems, there's a switch in COSY called SSH Tunnel, which can be turned off to allow for in the clear data communication, which provides very good performance uh, in these secure environments. And as I mentioned, the uh, software is free to use, but uh, we also offer commercial support licenses for uh, customers who are interested in formal SLAs. So let's get started with our Hello World example. In the demonstration that follows, we're going to use COSY to launch a process on a remote Linux server that's going to write a message to standard out 
And then in a Unix pipeline, it's going to read the contents of a data set from a job step DD. It's going to compress that data using the Linux gzip command. And then it'll write the compressed data back to ZOS to a Unix file system file. Finally, it will exit with a return code that sets the job step condition code. So in order to make hybrid batch processing work, we have to have a ZOS system, which we show on the right, a Linux system, which we show on the left, and a job. This job consists of a single step, which has, uh, which invokes COSY proc, which is the COSY launcher, uh, and the arg statement tells the COSY launcher where to launch the target program. That's a user ID at some remote Linux system. There are uh, four DDs of interest here, sysout, which is our standard sysout, standard out, which will be our remote systems standard out stream, which is redirected back to ZOS. We have an input DD, which designates the data that we want to compress from ZOS, and then the standard in DD, which is the program that we wish to run on the remote system. So the launcher sets up this uh, redirection of the standard streams, and it launches the program and starts executing on the remote Linux system. The first line of the program is an echo, which is a uh, Unix shell script command for writing a string to standard out. Uh, before we actually can write that string, we have to do a command substitution to get the name of the operating system that we're running on. And if we do that, we see that we are actually running on Linux, not on ZOS. Echo writes its output to standard out, which has been redirected to the standard out DD. Uh, so it shows up not on the remote system, but back in our spool file on ZOS. The next line of the shell script uses the from DSN dataset pipes command to read data from the input DD uh, my.data. Let's show that. So it streams the data. This uh, from DSN command reaches back to ZOS and streams that data down to our remote system. And the output goes to standard out, which is piped to the Linux gzip command, which compresses that data on the fly. Notice the two triangles on the left. This is happening in parallel. Um, as the data is being read, the compression is occurring. gzip compresses and writes its data to standard out, which is then sent to another data set pipes command to file, which takes the compressed data and writes it to a ZOS Unix system services file called slash temp slash out dot gz. When the job completes from DSN finishes reading its data, gzip finishes compressing and to file finishes writing. Finally, the exit code of four is issued from the shell script, which is adopted by ZOS as the job step condition code. So let's see how we did on our hybrid batch programming principles. Item one shows that we are able to run a program on a remote system from a ZOS batch job step. Item two shows that we're able to use a program on that Linux machine without any modification. In this case, we're using gzip. Item three says that we're able to redirect the standard streams uh, back to ZOS, uh, DDs. And item four says that the remote program is able to reach back and use dataset pipes commands to read and write ZOS artifacts. And then finally, item five shows that the return code from the uh, target program is adopted as the job step condition code. This chart just discusses uh, those uh, basic principles uh, as they apply to our example. So that completes our introduction to ZOS hybrid batch processing. Uh, there's a lot more information on our website. Um, in particular, there's a case study that we have published um, titled Updating a Linux Database from ZOS Batch which runs the uh, Oracle SQL loader to load data from ZOS into a remote system database. And it explores a lot of these technical ideas in more detail and shows um, uh, a little bit more of the nitty gritty behind uh, how hybrid batch processing works. Finally, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at info at dovetail.com.